Good morning, St. Patrick's. I'm really happy to introduce a good friend who's going to be presiding at Mass, Bishop Mark Brennan. Uh, Mark and I, after each of us finished college, uh, we were sent to study theology some 3,000 miles away. And in those four years we were together, you're not supposed to go home for Christmas or Thanksgiving. And so you really had to kind of lean on each other and become family. And in many ways, uh, Mark has been that for me. And uh, five years ago, this January, coming up, uh, Mark was ordained Auxiliary Bishop of Baltimore, Maryland. And then, two years ago, Pope Francis named him as Bishop of Wheeling, Charleston, West Virginia. So he uh, leads uh, the whole state of West Virginia. So about a month ago, he said, uh, Val, I'm coming in, for, I'm on vacation. Can I spend two or three days? And so I'm happy that it's on, a, on, a, on a, the Feast of the Assumption, Mary's Feast. So uh, I'm very happy to welcome uh, Bishop Mark Brennan. And finally, as you saw from my note, because of the, the Delta variant being so strong that masks are mandatory for everyone, simply for our safety and the safety of others, particularly when we learned that those of us who have been fully vaccinated may pass on the uh, disease as well. So thank you for your cooperation. Hello and welcome to St. Patrick's. We're glad you're here. Just a few reminders before Mass. Please silence any cell phones or noise-making devices at this time. In addition, we are asking all to wear a mask to protect each other, especially the children and immunocompromised. Also, please take care in approaching others. Don't forget to socially distance. And would all please stand for our entrance procession, Immaculate Mary. Angelica.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And we pray for your spirit. Thank uh, Monsignor Val for his uh, kind uh, welcome. It's good to be here. Uh, I know what part Tennessee took in the, the last, the unpleasantness of the mid-19th century. I was born in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, which is on the other side. But we're reconciled now, right? Okay, very good. So I feel very welcome here. Uh, as the Father said, uh, uh, rather, sometimes things happen late in life that you really don't expect. So on the road towards retirement, uh, I was actually named a bishop for Baltimore. And then two years ago, this coming Sunday, I uh, became the Bishop of the Wheeling Charleston Diocese in West Virginia. I still feel what I've been most of my adult life that I'm a parish priest. And now my parish is a whole state. <laughs> so <laughs> it requires a lot of traveling around in my 96 parishes and 18 missions and 24 Catholic schools and everything else is going on. But it's a wonderful experience. God never fails you when you try to respond to his call never fails. He always gives you what you need. So as we begin this Mass and this happy feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother, what a wonderful thing to celebrate. We, gather, we first acknowledge before the Lord our sins and offenses and ask pardon for them. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Pray. 
almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was open, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was carrying out, crying out in birth pains in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten thorns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, so that there she can be nourished, so that there for 1,260 days. Then I heard a voice in heaven proclaiming, now have you have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Messiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Your beauty, for he is your. 
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For Christ must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, 
the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Good to be here with you in this uh, very beautiful church. Uh, Father uh, Monsignor Val might remember that on this day, exactly this day, 50 years ago, we were together in a little town called Garniano, which is along Lake Garda, a very narrow, long, narrow lake in northern Italy. We were in the middle of uh, our Italian uh, summer school, trying to learn a language that we had arrived the, the year before, uh, but, and the t teaching language in our university was Italian. Most of us arrived with no knowledge of Italian. Huh? And we found a bit of a struggle during that first year, so a number of us went away that uh, first full summer in Italy to study the language so we could understand what's going on in class, okay? And uh, just feel better about being in Italy, you know? So on this particular day, the Feast of the Assumption, well, it's called Fer Agosto, the August feast, Fer Agosto in Italy. It's a public holiday. Uh, most of the country being at least nominally Catholic, uh, and it's a great holiday, and we, Remember, we rented canoes, went out on Lake Garda, and then we tied up uh, at a, or came to land at a little place, and up, going up a hill, there was an old church, I think in 11th century, and mass was offered right at this hour, 11 o'clock in the morning, so we had the mass of the Assumption, and then we went back, canoed a little bit more, stopped someplace else, had a picnic lunch, and this was a, there were a group of us, uh, I don't know how many, but at least a, maybe a, 10 or a dozen of us students to, to, from all over Europe and the United States studying Italian. So we had this nice picnic lunch, then we canoed back uh, to Garniano, and that evening we had a international music festival uh, in the building where we studied. That building, by the, how ironic it was, that building was the last headquarters of Benito Mussolini before the Partigiani got to him and strung him up, okay? He had been, of course, the, the dict il duce, the dictator uh, of Italy for a number of years. But in, we had a 
wonderful international music festival. Remember, we, one song we sang was uh, Woody Guthrie's This Land is Your Land, This Land is My Land. Uh, don't know whether we sang it well or not, but we sang it, right? And then the, the French did their thing, and the Germans did their thing, and the, uh, the Czechs and the Poles, and, uh, and so on. It was just uh, it was a wonderful way to celebrate uh, a holy day. And insofar as we can do that uh, in these times, certainly Christmas we should try to keep as a true holy day. Uh, Mary, Mother of God, New Year's Day, they give us holiday, I right? take advantage of it. Thanksgiving. Yeah. I would boycott any store that requires their workers to come in Thanksgiving evening. That's wrong. Call them up and tell them you're not going to shop there anymore. Okay, okay. But, on, but what a wonderful occasion we had on that uh, Feast of the Assumption exactly 50 years ago. But this feast, what is it, uh, what's it really about? I think you have to go back to the beginning of Mary's life. <clears throat> God had... Uh, marked her out to be the mother of his son and prepared the way. Uh, at her conception, she was kept free of original sin. Okay? Not gonna go into a long discourse on original sin, but all I can say is you look around all the things happening in the world, it had to start somewhere and sometime, right? And so wherever that was, uh, those human beings set a pattern uh, and in a sense infected us with the virus of uh, selfishness and uh, those things, all those things that happened or passed on to us. But to prepare Mary to be the mother of his son, God kept her free of that original sin. Okay? One penalty of original sin was the loss of our of natural immortality. We were, at, in God's plan, we were actually meant to live, uh, I don't know how long it would be, but we immortal, but then there'd be a transition at some point uh, into the fullness of eternal life. But it would be painless, no anxiety, uh, the body would not be corrupted or anything. At her, as St. Paul reminds us, that uh, death is a result of sin, ultimately. So, uh, rid of that original sin, that's a, a penalty. We lost our natural immortality. At the end of her earthly life, Mary experienced uh, not the corruption of her body. I don't think the church has actually pronounced, did she die? or was she transformed as those who are alive at Christ's second coming will be transformed, right? But at any rate, she did not suffer the corruption of her body as her son had not uh, suffered it when he uh, died, okay? And this is uh, uh, really what we can expect also. You know that the nursery rhyme, uh, you know it, Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go, okay? Think of that lamb as the, the lamb of God, okay? And whose fleece was white as snow, perfectly innocent, like us in all things except sin, okay? And as a little toddler, you can you watch little ones today, uh, following his mother around. Everywhere that Mary went, he was, uh, sure to go. Well, it changes Mary's assumption where her son has gone. There she was sure to go. Huh? She was, you might call Mary's assumption her early resurrection. Huh? Uh, so that she enters the fullness of eternal life, body as well as soul. Huh? Well, what's the meaning for us? Where Mary has gone, we are sure to go if we live by the teachings of her son and trust in the grace of God to enable us to live upright lives, to love our neighbor as ourselves, to honor God in, how, in the manner of our life. Okay? That's where Mary has gone, we are sure to go. Mary's assumption shows that God keeps his word. 
He has already raised Mary, as we heard in the second reading. Everything in proper order, Christ the first fruits, and then it is coming, the rest of us, except in between, there's room for a few people, and Mary, that's where Mary comes. She's raised up uh, to new life. God keeps his word. If he raised Mary, it's a sign <clears throat> he's going to fulfill his word to remain to uh, raise us up also. So go back to the first image. A wonderful day spent on this feast with uh, young people from around different parts of the, of the world, uh, ending up with a wonderful festival of music. It was a little glimpse, I think, of what we can expect in eternity when God fulfills his promise uh, to bring us to the full happiness of eternal life where we will join Mary and all the saints who have been raised also from the dead. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, not substantial with the Father, through him in all things were made. For our salvation, he came down and by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, our Creator, and life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turn now to God, asking him to hear our prayers for ourselves, this parish, the wider church, and the whole world. For the universal church, held in the loving care of Mary, our mother, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, <clears throat> That on this feast of Mary, the church and world may recognize women's rightful contributions to the human family. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> For separated families among immigrants and refugees, seeking hope from violence and poverty in their homeland, that they may find support and hospitality. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> For those alienated from the church, for whatever reason, that Mary's intercession may give them consolation and hope. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> For the care that we show in safeguarding others from the Delta variant, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> For the ministry of birthright and for pregnant women in crisis and their children after birth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord. <clears throat> for all those who have died, that they might experience the embrace of God in eternity, especially as we pray for Alan Stiles, Floyd Lynch, 
Stella Crone, and Frank Ippolito. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, on the, this feast of Mary, the mother of your son, we ask you to accept our prayers and grant us the grace to be faithful to your word as you granted that grace to her. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all your ministers, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now. said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be the Lamb of God, but I don't say they will hurt the Son of God.
I am the way, and my path is straight and true. Follow me to where I lead, there my Father waits for you. I receive the living God, and my heart is Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, that we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Today's Gospel speaks of two pregnant women, Elizabeth and Mary. And birthright ministry in this area is asking to speak at the varied parishes. And so appropriately this Sunday, the executive director of Birthright, Vicki Hardesty, is coming to speak about this ministry and what it means in our lives and the lives of many. After that, there'll be a second collection to be taken up. At the end of each pew are envelopes for, uh, for Birthright are also at the back. And you can send it in, or if you would prefer, next Sunday in the regular offering, making the check out to Birthright. But I uh, want to welcome, in the name of the parish, Vicki Hardesty. And thank you for allowing me to be here today. I appreciate that. Birthright is an, or is an international organization. Many people don't realize that but each chapter has to support itself. And interesting enough, it was the Catholic Church who brought birthright to Memphis. Monsignors Clunan, Monsignor Batson, and Sister Cecilia Biven saw birthright in another city and said, we need that in Memphis. We have a lot of, of single, pregnancy, single women pregnancies. Uh, we have high abortion rates. We, we need to get this moving. And so, they brought us here. We believe that, that life begins at conception. And you stole my thunder just a little bit because I added to my notes how appropriate the reading today, the gospel reading is, that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. You know, to know that that is a child and not whatever else people have called it, a glob of cells or whatever, but we believe in that life that is there. Birthright offers free pregnancy testing, a written confirmation of pregnancy so that they can get their insurance or their WIC. We have maternity clothes and we have baby clothes. 
We have mentors who follow them beyond the pregnancy for as long as they want us to. We have life skill classes that we offer to them that uh, provide basics during pregnancy on how do you take care of a baby when you come home from the hospital? What are you going to do with that umbilical cord? Uh, budgeting and finance, how do you prepare a budget with a baby in the house? Labor and delivery classes, breastfeeding classes, all of those, child development. So COVID has thrown a little bit of, of loop for us, so we haven't had in-person classes yet, but we'll be bringing those back, and I'm always looking for volunteers to be mentors. All of our services are free. No one is ever charged for anything when they come to our office. I've been at Birthright a long time, and many, many years ago, before I was executive director, I was one of the counselors in the office, and a young lady showed up at the door that I had seen. She had been abortion-minded, and she came in carrying her baby. Now, I had lost contact with her because she didn't want me to call her. She didn't give me permission to call her, so I didn't. I honored that. But she shows up with her baby, and I said, you've changed your mind. You had your baby. And she said, yes, because you made a difference in my life. And she brought me a gift. And I said, you didn't have to bring me something. You're, this baby is the gift that I want to see. And she said, open it, open it. She was so excited. So I opened the gift, and it's a lamp. And it's the guardian angel. You know, the wings over the two children. You've seen that many times. And it had a, a shade with different guardian angels around it, and it played a song. And she said, I saw this and you had to have it because you were my baby's guardian angel. If it hadn't been for you, she wouldn't be here. And I thought about that and you know, I don't work alone. I can't do my work if I don't have the support of people like you. So I ask you to please be generous. This is what the envelope looks like if you haven't seen one. Take it home if you want to, think about it. Maybe you can't give this week or next week, but next month, maybe things are better. Whenever you can, remember us. Because I want you to be the guardian angels for Birthright. It's not just me. It is all of the people in this community. Birthright celebrates its 50th anniversary in Memphis next year. So we have served this tri-state area very faithfully for many, many years. And only by the grace of God and people like you, who are God-filled, is Birthright able to continue its mission. Thank you. So, Sylvia, the uh, baskets, if you put it out so for, uh, uh, for people to come up to bring their offering. I have some connections to birthright, too. Before I was even ordained a priest, uh, I spent a couple of years as a deacon in my home diocese of Washington. I remember in, uh, that first year, I helped to get a, a birthright started in uh, 
uh, Leonardtown, Maryland, the, old, the uh, county seat for St. Mary's County, the oldest county in Maryland. And then uh, years later, it was a birthright in Washington looking for a place to, we managed to find a place for them in Silver Spring, just, just north of the city. So I uh, had some connections over the years with, uh, with birthright. Good, a wonderful organization doing great work. So, a pleasure being with all of you, really. God bless you, and may the Lord uh, make this parish a vibrant center of, of the Catholic faith for all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Might God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hail, Lord.